some people might say that small business owners are the lifeblood of the community. What would you do to help ease their financial burden and make it easier for them to open up and operate in Yorktown? Um, I talked about this on Monday. Um, I know that we're talking about uh, businesses having trouble even you know, getting a sign permit. Uh, I frequented some businesses that you know, I, I do on a, really, on a daily basis or on a regular basis, and I have heard that, that Yorktown is difficult to do business with. So um, I really think we need to get to the bottom of what the root of the problem is. Is it the town holding up permits? I, I can't answer that right now. Um, is it uh, the the consultant that the or the contractor that the business hired to do the renovations that's not filling out proper pa paperwork? I don't know. So um, my thought was to bring in the businesses, the small businesses, to um, uh, to those people who own who just opened small businesses, as well as maybe people who put in. Uh, permits for renovations or changes to their space to sit down and talk to someone and give us the information. Tell us what problems you had. Tell us what worked well and what didn't. And then we could actually take that information and use it to help uh, new businesses coming in or people who are want to, you know, maybe expand. We can make it easier for them. But then we'll have real data as far as very specific things that happen and we can investigate that to see what the cause was. Right, let's start going back this way now. Greg? Uh, I think that shows the, uh, the, the naive uh, approach that my opponent has, saying that we don't know and we're going to bring in a group to look at this. We have the Chamber of Commerce, we have the Small Business Association. Uh, they deal with these businesses on a regular basis. The supervisor does as well as town board members talk to these businesses. I, I frequent businesses all the time also when I talk to them. And I know a lot of new business owners that have opened up and had issues. So I don't think we need to find the root cause. I think we know what the causes are. <clears throat> and we need to have a pro-business approach from the town that's going to say, expedite the applications, whether it be a BACA, whether it be the planning board, whether it be the building inspector. And the town can address those issues very easily. I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel because we are, I think we have groups that are bringing these businesses in and know what some of the issues are. All right. I'll let you rebut to that. Uh, after, uh, I'll let you rebut to that now, and we'll get to that side of the table. No problem. Okay. Okay. If the supervisor is already aware of the issues, and the Chamber of Commerce is already aware of the issues, then why haven't they been fixed already? That's all I have to say. Yeah. All right. so, Tom. 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 Okay. Um, <clears throat> the problem here in lies is that it is being fixed as we speak. The, uh, in the first two years of the supervisor's tenure, he reached out and they got a lot of stuff done. They put some businesses in and what had happened is that things got stalled. When things get stalled, these small businesses only have a certain amount of capital to put into a business. For instance, a bagel shop. How many bagels must you sell to recoup whatever money you have to wait to get your business open, be it a sign, be it a permit to uh, put a sewer line in, or whatever the case might be. So uh, I think that we need to streamline the, once again, streamline the permitting processes. We need to get the Chamber of Commerce and the, the uh, other organizations that are, are involved in that involved more. And the town board needs to get involved more to uh, um, persuade these businesses to come into Yorktown. Let's open Yorktown for business. So uh, let me start at the top um, with, with uh, th th there are a variety of types of businesses in the town. And I use the term a lot, big box stores, regional or national chains. And then you have really, truly small local businesses that are typically made up of businesses that operate within the town and often operate with people who also live in the town. And I think that you can't treat them all the same because they have different needs and, 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 and they, they all have different business models. So I would go back to my 2006-2007 um, attempt to get the, the town, the chamber, the planning board, and businesses big businesses, little businesses, together around the table 
to, to and create a business improvement board. Um, in, in, in that way, you'll, you'll find out from those businesses exactly what it is, what the problems were. You can ask them, what were your problems when you opened your door? After you opened your door, what were you faced with? Um, and you'll, you'll, you'll discover a lot of interesting things, I think. And you'll, you'll have a, a line item list of things that you could actually do. And signs are a big thing for me, too. I mean, I know some businesses that... God, you know, they, they say they're waiting three or four months for a vodka to remove, review a sign and say it's the wrong color and it's the wrong size, and that, that, that's a bureaucracy and that's a problem that we could easily fix if we had enough people coming forward to say, you know, these five or ten businesses all had issues and spent $10,000 each to get their signs up. That's ridiculous. But we won't know unless we get the right group of people around the table to have the discussion. I agree. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to add before we move on? Just, just one quick thing, um, and it kind of echoes what, what uh, Bob said, was the big, excuse me, big box stores bring people in, which then the people go to the smaller stores, be it you want to go to, I'm just going to use Kmart as an example, and then in that particular strip mall there, maybe you go to the beauty parlor or the nail salon or the pizza shop or the liquor store or whatever the case might be. So the big box stores definitely have... Um, clout when it comes to bringing the people in the masses to go to the little stores. I, I'd like to just rebut that if I could. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a fact that big box stores bring more traffic in and they do large amount of revenue. They, they really turn over their inventory. However, it's, it's been studied and quite a large percentage, and I've seen different percentages, 80 or 90 percent of the people who come will, will, will come from out of town and they will go to that big box store or national and retail, uh, uh, regional tra um, uh, retailers. They will go there, load up their trucks, their cars, and they will go home, never having stopped in to get a haircut or eating something. Everything they need, and if Costco was, I don't like to use it as an example because people always ask about that because I was part of Smart Growth, but everything you need, if you want to eat, if you need gas, if you are shopping for toilet paper, everything you need can be done in one stop at Costco. And to think that people are going to come from Millward to Chappaqua or Bedford and go to Costco and then meander around our town, I think is just a, um, inaccurate. So, I just got one little rebut to that. If you have what a mall, okay, I'm not even going to use the Jefferson Valley Mall. Okay, <laughs> you have a mall. You have two anchor stores, or you have several anchor stores. What do you have in the middle? Small business. The people go to the small business. Thank you. 